Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for uh, joining class. Um, can I ask Siddharth to lead us in prayer, please, before we begin? Can you lead us in prayer, please? Yeah, sure. Kavishwa, thank, thank you for this. Yeah, we just want to thank you for this day you have given us, Lord. God, we just want to pray as we all come together to learn about your word and your teaching, Lord. I pray that you will help us and guide us and lead us as we learn, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will give us wisdom and knowledge to understand what's been taught, Lord. I just want to thank you for everything. Bless this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so uh, last week we were looking at um, Second Timothy, which chapter? So remember which chapter we studied last week? In Second Timothy. Okay, thank you, Prince. Chapter one. Okay, so in chapter 1, we see that Paul is challenging Timothy not to be ashamed uh, of the gospel or of speaking of the Lord. Uh, he also tells him not to be ashamed of uh, identifying with, uh, you know, genuine ministers of God, even if they are suffering uh, for the sake of Christ. Uh, and Paul is specifically saying this because you know, many of them are a couple of them, you know, they um, stopped identifying or they stopped relating with uh, Paul because uh, he was in chains or he's in chains. Uh, remember when he's writing Second Timothy, he's in prison in Rome and uh, uh, he knows that death is inevitable, that he's going to face death, okay? And um, so he says, you know, don't be ashamed of preaching the gospel, of sharing the gospel, of speaking of the Lord, and also don't be ashamed of um, identifying with genuine ministers of God, uh, even if they are suffering or being persecuted or in chains for the sake of the gospel. And then he encourages Timothy to stir up the gift of God in him. And uh, then Paul goes on to make a statement on why he is not ashamed to suffer for the sake of the gospel, and we ended with that last class. Uh, he mentions two reasons. Uh, he says, uh, I know whom I have believed. That means the one I have believed, Paul is saying, has given him the promise of life. And the one who has promised him uh, life, eternal life, is Jesus Christ, the Savior. And he is the source of all grace, mercy, and truth. As Paul begins this letter, he, he writes this in his greetings. Um, and Paul also has mentioned that uh, Jesus Christ is the one who gives immortality. Okay. And the second reason is he says, I know that uh, you know God is able, or the one who uh, promised him this eternal life is able to keep what Paul has committed to him, or uh, you know, guard what Paul has deposited with him. That means God is able to protect, uh, to safeguard, to keep what we have committed to him until that day. So, what have we committed to him? You know, if they've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we have placed our life in his hands, and uh, God is more than able to keep it, to protect it, to safeguard it for us. So we stopped at uh, verse 12, uh, which we did not complete this entire chapter, but we continued uh, today. So can one of you read uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 till the end of the chapter, please? Till verse 18. And one of you read uh, 1 Timothy, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 13 to verse 18, to the end of the chapter. Yeah, 
I would request all of you to have your Bibles open because we are going to read in the uh, Second Timothy chapter two after we finish chapter one. Uh, like you to open your Bibles so that you can follow. So can one of you read now first Second Timothy chapter one verses uh, thirteen to the end of the chapter, which is uh, verse eighteen. Thirteen to eighteen, then. Yes. Okay. What you heard from me keeps us the battle of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Examples of disloyalty and loyalty. You know that every one in the province of Asia has deserted me, including. Including Phygius okay. and Hermogenes, may the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, where he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways to help you in Ephesus. Thank you, Sida. Okay, so verse 13 says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you've heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. So here we see that Paul is giving an important instruction uh, to a minister of God, to Timothy, and he's telling him the key to avoid uh, errors or wrong teachings or deception. Uh, deceptive teachings, uh, deceptive people who bring in deceptive teaching is to stay with the pattern of sound words. Uh, what is the meaning of this phrase, uh, the pattern of sound words? Uh, Paul is telling Timothy, uh, you know, uh, stay with what you have learned, what was taught to you, what was imparted to you uh, by his grandmother, by his mother, uh, by Timothy and what he has learned also from God's word. Okay, so similarly, you know, uh, if uh, we are living in a world where there's a lot of, uh, you know, false teachers, false teachings that are happening, wrong teachings that are away from God's word, away from the truth. So if we have to avoid, uh, you know, these errors, and avoid these deceptive things that come into the church or come in deep into our minds, uh, then we have to stay with the pattern of sound words. That means stay with what you have been taught, what you have learned, and what you are reading and learning from God's words. So God's word is our standard. Okay. So we see from First Timothy, we recall what we learned in First Timothy, that Paul say uh, that one of the reasons, you know, why Paul assigned Timothy to Ephesus, the church at Ephesus and the surrounding areas, is to protect the church from all kinds of false uh, teachings. So he's saying he's reminding him, instructing him, uh, you know, to stay away from all of these uh, false teachings and false teachers. And secondly, we also read or we learned in First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, where Paul is talking about seducing spirits that give rise to doctrines, teachings uh, of demons uh, that, you know, seek to infiltrate the church uh, through the leaders. And here he's basically talking about uh, the Jews uh, and they draw people away from the faith. Okay, so many wrong teachings or errors in teaching in the church are actually the work of evil spirits. And this is true well-meaning uh, ministers uh, who have been seduced or deceived and sadly they don't know themselves. Uh, so we need to keep guard, you know, we need to keep our guard, uh, you know, always up. Uh, against all of these false teachings and false teachings. And how do we do that? Uh, you know, it is by um, uh, staying with the pattern of sound words. That means, uh, you know, stay with what you have taught, being taught what you have heard, what you have learned, 
and what is written in God's word. So Paul once again reminds Timothy uh, to stay with the teachings that he has learned and that Paul has given Timothy. And he tells him, keep it simple, you know, stay with walking in the faith and love in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, uh, can one of you read verse 14, please? The good things which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Thank you, Prince. So here we see that we have to guard what has been committed to us. And uh, this is a repeat of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Uh, there also Paul is telling Timothy to guard you know, what has been committed to him. So we need to guard what is committed to us and we can guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit, okay. We also need the power of the Holy Spirit to guard the word of God that is within us, okay. You know, uh, Satan is a deceiver, he can deceive us uh, with a lot of wrong things, so we also need to guard the word that is within us. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit's guidance, we need his anointing. Uh, the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Uh, we need the anointing uh, to guard the word of God that has been deposited in us. Okay? We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God uh, within to guard the word of God that has been uh, deposited in us. Okay, So it is the anointing within that will teach us what is right and wrong as we do it in 1 John chapter 2. Verse 20 and 27. So, can some of one of you read uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27, please? One John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. Twenty six and twenty seven. Yeah? Yes, 20 and 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. But you have an anointing from the Holy, Holy One, and all of you know the truth. 20, 27. Yes. As for you, the anointing you received from Him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as His anointing teaches you about all things, and as the anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in Him. Yes. Thank you. So we see that the anointing, uh, you know, will teach us uh, everything. Uh, we do not need anyone to teach us, but the anointing within will teach us. Uh, it will teach us what is the truth, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, it will teach us, show us what is lies. Okay, so we need to, uh, you know, we need the anointing of God in our lives. Uh, to, to guard the word that is deposited in us and also the anointing within us will teach us what is right and what is wrong. Okay, so we move on to verse 15. Can one of you read verse 15, please? This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are busy, lest, and Homo gens. Okay, so it appears that uh, many believers from Asia Minor have abandoned or deserted uh, their friendship or their association with uh, the Apostle Paul uh, because he is imprisoned. They are all afraid that they might also be imprisoned. Uh, and, and Paul mentions two of them, Phygelius and Homogenes. Uh, there are two names that he mentions. Um, men who seem to have uh, abandoned their friendship with Paul. Uh, we do not know anything more about these two people other than that they just abandoned their friendship or their relationship with Paul. Uh, and so it's no wonder that Paul is firmly encouraging Timothy uh, not to be ashamed of uh, you know, speaking the gospel, or of speaking of the Lord, and also being associated with Paul and others who are being imprisoned like uh, we saw earlier in this chapter. Okay, 
And then he, uh, the closing uh, lines uh, in this chapter was, uh, was 16, 17, and 18. Can one of you read that, please? Verses 16, 17, and 18. Look, you read uh, verses 16, 17, and 18. Ma'am, can I read? Yeah, sure, please. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, uh, 16 to 18, right? Yes. Uh, the Lord grant mercy to the uh, household of Onisphros, uh, for he often refreshed me and uh, was not ashamed of my cha chain. But uh, when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out uh, very jealously and found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy for the Lord in the day. In that day, uh, and you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at uh, Ephesus. Thank you. So here Paul is uh, mentioning about a person called Emisiphorus. Um, Onesiphorus is not mentioned elsewhere, uh, but you know, what he uh, Paul writes about him is a wonderful affirmation uh, of this man, of what he did uh, for Paul. Okay, uh, Paul says that he ministered to him when uh, when Paul was in Ephesus. Uh, Onesiphorus also came to Rome. He searched. He looked for uh, Paul. And he found out where he was in Rome. And Paul says he has often refreshed Paul. And, uh, and then you know, Paul also mentions that uh, he is not ashamed of Paul uh, when Paul was being in prison or in being in uh, chains. So uh, this is a good example for us to follow, to be like uh, Onesiphorus, to do something similar to you know, what he has done. Uh, two fellow believers, uh, you know, uh, just uh, ministry to fellow believers, taking care of their needs, um, helping them in their time of difficulties, uh, or when they're persecuted, to stand along with them, uh, you know, uh, or uh, when they're going through troubles and difficulties, to encourage them, strengthen them, uh, just be with them. Okay, so it's wonderful to see this man. Onesiphorus to hear his testimony from Paul and to know how, you know, uh, he has uh, taken the pains and gone out of his way to, you know, uh, minister to Paul, to care, care for his needs, cater to his needs, and also the way he, you know, looked for him and found him and has often refreshed Paul. Uh, and Paul says he's not, uh, uh, you know, he was never ashamed that Paul was in chains, but uh, refreshed and ministered to him. So I think this is what even God looks uh, for us to do as a community of believers, a church uh, to refresh, strengthen, uh, build each one of us, uh, build each uh, one another in the faith, not just in the faith, but also uh, uh, taking care of each other's needs, just like in the own church, you know, sold the property, sold the things, brought and gave the money to the uh, to the apostles and um, you know they shared it with those who did not have and so that is the kind of church that God uh, envisions for us, he wants us to have and as pastors, ministers you know that is a kind of care and um, that is a kind of uh, relationship that we need to have with uh, other fellow believers okay uh, it's okay, Kiran, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Kiran says, I was reading in, uh, when the mic was muted. Okay, so that is the end of uh, chapter one in Second Timothy. Uh, the key takeaway was there are many important things, but Second Timothy chapter one was eight says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, 
that means we should not be ashamed to witness for our Lord. Okay, but for um, you know, there are many key takeaways that stir up the you know, um, the stir up the gifts that have been given to you. Paul tells him, uh, tells Timothy, so there are many other good key takeaways, but this one is that kind of a, uh, emphasize the main emphasis in this uh, chapter. Okay. Uh, any questions in this chapter? Anything you'd like to share your comments, your thoughts? No? Okay, if not, um, we will move on to 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, where there are about 26 verses. So, yes, you all know, six of you all, so each one of you can read uh, four verses each, and the last person can read maybe an extra two verses. Okay, so can we begin reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, and all of us reading four, four verses, the last few people can read about five or six verses. Yes. Let's begin. Come to begin. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the thing you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, interest to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Train me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serves, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Thank you. Even as uh, you're reading it, uh, you know, after we finish reading, I will ask each one of you to just mention one or two things that uh, you know you felt is stirring in your heart, or if it's something that you missed to you, or some word, or some uh, phrase, or some words that just left out of these pages at you and uh, really spoke to you. So, you know, I'll ask you to share that after we read all of these verses. Okay. Uh, someone else can read. From five to us eight, please. I'll read. Yeah. Uh, and also, if anyone anyone competes in athletics, uh, he is not crowned unless he com competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer uh, must be first to partake uh, of the crops. Consider what I say, uh, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel. Okay, you can read 9 and 10 as well. Uh, okay, sure. For which I suffer trouble as an evil, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure, <clears throat> endure all things for the sake of the elect, that uh, they also may obtain the salvation which is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. Okay, thank you, Kanan. Um, can somebody else read? Uh... This is a faithful saying, for if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of those things, sharing them before the Lord, not to strive about what to no profit, to the to the ray. Line of the years. Yes. Be diligent to present yourself approved God, a worker who does not need to be assumed rightly, divinely, the word of truth. Continue. 
two verses, no? but yeah. some perform and idle abundantly, uh, abound, abound, for they will, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will serve like cancer. Uh, harmonious and harmonious and filters are of this lot. So, yeah. thank you. If somebody else can read the next few verses. We have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having the Lord knows those who are. And let everyone who names the name of the Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great ho house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of for honor, sanctified and useful for the masters prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but Pressure righteousness, sorry, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the name of the Lord out of pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they are generate strife. Thank you. 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 And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. With God, perhaps, will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come into their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Okay, so this is Second Timothy chapter two. Uh, I'd like each one of uh, you all to share one or uh, two things that, uh, you know, uh, stood out for you, something that just left out of these pages at you, something that you remembered, you have learned before, or was spoken to you. I'd like to share that now. Each one of us will just take one of the minutes to share. You don't want to unmute your mics and speak, you can you know, type in the chat so I'm going to just read it out. Yes, ma'am. This uh, verse 15 I highlighted. Be diligent in the present work so and apt to God. So we need to uh, apt to God, do whatever we are doing. Uh, we should not be ashamed that uh, saying a worker does not uh, does not need to be ashamed. So uh, in but, uh, chapter 1, but, but with uh, 8, they also we see, uh, do not be ashamed for the testimony of Lord Jesus Christ. So we also need to that uh, uh, response. We should not ashamed for the gospel. Thank you, Prince. Thank you for sharing that. Not to be ashamed of the gospel. Be diligent uh, to present ourselves as one approved of God and uh, not we need not be ashamed, but try to divide the word of God, try so to speak the word of God, teach in God's word. Thank you, please, for sharing that. Okay, someone else? Everyone has to share, so you know quickly let's move on. I'm first 20, 21, 2, 3, and 4 also. 
the vessels for honor to so, ma'am here is uh, i received many thing from the chapter so, we should to be ready for as a vessel vessels for god's work within us we, we have to try to maintain uh, Okay, thank you, Kiran. Um, Kiran says that we need to be vessels of honor. That when we serve God, that we serve Him with honor, in holiness, in uprightness, uh, and not be vessels of dishonor. Okay. Thank you, Kiran. What about Dave, Kanan, and Thomas? Yeah, I I would like to share the things from uh, that I read. um verses 5 to 7 uh in this it's a general thing that uh, uh in the world right uh, everything has a if we are if we want to become good the, there was a hard work is began there right so uh, it, it's uh, not only for the world uh, worldly things it also for our uh, ministry how much uh, uh, harder we work in our ministry that much harder uh, god will give uh, people uh, we can reach people yeah thank you kanan yes uh, you know uh, uh, the people that uh, the work yeah. is i i mean the uh, hard work yes uh, people like to the workplace in the world you know they work long hours really hard they slog it out uh, but you know that in ministry we also need to work hard uh, like a farmer like uh, you know a soldier uh, and that's when we can uh, you know reap the benefits of our hard work and that's also when God can bless the work of our hands thank you kanan okay what about thomas and dave Okay. Talking about the. Uh, yes, go ahead, uh, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, okay. Uh, so ver- verses two, uh, three, and four. Uh, the part that I read. Uh, he's talking about um, what came out to me is like, like how we are to be like a, a soldier to Christ, uh, someone who. I have received a commandment from God uh, because God is our our, our uh, in co- commanding officer like um, we we are not to be tam- tangled in uh, in civil affairs like sometimes we 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 fear people and we we want to please people but actually our command is from God from Jesus and we are to please uh, what uh, we are to obey what he uh, he has given us and we have to do what he has asked us to do if you look at uh, so many places in in the world there are so many places where we can see soldiers and we can see them uh, guarding a place or or something when you, when you go to india gate in delhi or some famous places you can see soldiers standing there and they are they, they stand there for hours uh, guarding the place despite they are being hungry despite um, uh, they have to go to, they even if they even need to go to toilet yet they stand stand there and guard the place uh, because they have received the command from their commanding officer so uh, it is what in our life uh, as well we are we are to be like a soldier for Christ and to please what he uh, please and to do what our commanding officer Jesus has told us to do thank you great yes uh, we need to be like a soldier and uh, we need to do the will and the command of our commanding officer that is Jesus Christ to do what he is saying and follow his commands. Thank you. Yes, Thomas? This is a portion I read. Paul uh, saying that uh, uh, we have to cleanse ourselves to you, God, more and more. Uh, he's talking about the holiness and the purity of the life. He says the pursue righteousness. Uh, it's very important when we, are, we walk with the Christ, uh, we are sanctified, that's true, but we have to cleanse every day to check our life and the walk with the Christ. So when we do that, God will use in a powerful way. 
many times uh, we may focus on many things but not our pers- holiness and the and the righteous life pursue that god will make uh, everything uh, great that's what the paul uh, is trying to say for you and he says that flee from all the youthful lusts so it's it's very important these things a personal life and the purity thank you thank you thomas thank you for sharing that you know yes firstly uh, how we live our personal life with the purity and holiness is very important in this life okay thank you all for uh, sharing your thoughts on um, second timothy chapter 2 now we will just uh, study each uh, verse or each phrase uh, in this chapter okay so let's begin um now you know in second timothy uh, as i said last class when we began second timothy that it's more a personal letter in first timothy we, we see it's a, a, a we were paul is writing to timothy about how to take care of a local church but uh, second timothy is more a personal letter where paul is uh, exposing more about his own personal life and ministry uh he's teaching another man of god uh, how to be a servant of god and how to live uh, as a man of god okay so we look at uh, verse 1 in uh, chapter 2 of second timothy uh where paul is writing says you therefore my son is strong in the grace that is in christ jesus so you see how uh, paul is referring to timothy Uh, Timothy is a son in the faith who Paul has, uh, you know, ministered to seventeen years, raised him up, and now he's given him the responsibility to oversee the churches at um, uh, Ephesus. And he says, "Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus," which means be empowered by the grace uh, in Christ Jesus. Okay. Uh, in other epistles, Paul uh, mentions or asks. whoever he is writing to uh, to be strong in other things okay um, like for example in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 uh, Paul tells the church at Ephesus to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might uh, so he's basically meaning to say that God is a source of power and so use that source of power to uh, you know use that uh, in your own life to get strength to be able to face to persevere to endure all things but now in this letter to timothy paul is telling timothy be strong in the grace okay we know that god is the source of grace uh, he has bestowed his grace on you and me uh, the bible says in ephesians chapter 2 that god has lavished us with his grace okay and he talks about uh, in the same chapter the abundance of his grace uh, and god has lavished that grace on each one of us but paul is telling them to be strong in the grace of god that is given to us in uh, christ jesus that means he said be established in that grace what does it mean Okay, it means that don't let anyone or don't let anything, you know, shake you from the fact uh, that God, our God, is a God of grace. So don't let anything or don't let anyone shake you from the fact that the God that we serve, the God we trust, uh, is a God of grace, and His grace, you know, has been extended to each one of. us okay the abundance of this uh, riches of his grace has been extended to you and has been extended to me okay but the devil is very clever and very good at getting us to move out of this grace so one of the areas the devil may want us to move out of this grace is giving more importance to works okay so we suddenly come into this whole idea that we have to earn uh, things from uh, god and uh, so when we do that you know uh, or we have to make god happy or we have to please him 
uh, you know, so when we think like that, we get out of place and we move into uh, works. And for example, you know, we might think that, uh, you know, uh, only if you read 10 chapters a day uh, or give God money or do some works of charity, then, you know, God will be happy with us, he'll be smiling at us, he will bless us. Uh, uh, so we see that devil very deceptively, you know, he takes us out from our position of grace and he takes us into, you know, a place where, uh, you know, we think that we have to earn God's love, earn God's mercy, earn God's goodness, his favor, his uh, uh, blessings. Um, uh, but Paul is saying here, be strong in the grace and be established in the grace. Yes, we need to do uh, good works, uh, but we don't do it to earn, uh, but we do that good works because, you know, of what we have received. We have received the abundance of his grace. And so, you know, out of a joyful heart, or out of a, a, a blessed heart, out of a heart that wants to thank God and bless him, uh, we say, God, I give you everything that, you know, I want to give back everything that you have uh, given to me. And I do this because I am so grateful, okay? So then we engage in good things for God, not be out of, you know, trying to earn our status, our standing uh, of favor with God, but we do it just because we are so grateful, we're so thankful, our heart that is so filled with joy because of everything that God has given us and done for uh, us. Another area that the devil can get us out of grace uh, is uh, and get us uh, into another area is the guilt, uh, area of guilt and condemnation. Okay, so he can fill us with guilt and condemnation and we move out from the, the position of grace to a position where we are feeling very guilty and uh, condemned. Um, you know, the grace of God has lavished on us his divine favor. God sees us as his beloved sons and daughters. Uh, but we also know that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He keeps accusing us. And when we take on his accusations, when we feel so guilty, condemned, shameful, uh, you know, and we think that uh, we are not in a position to serve God, we're not in a position to uh, minister to God, or we're not in a position to uh, even read our Bible and pray uh, or do anything for God, we move from that position of grace to this position of or the area of guilt and uh, condemnation. And so that is why Paul is telling Timothy to be strong in the grace, okay? The grace of God empowers us. Uh, in the New Testament, uh, grace means a whole lot of things. It also means empowering. Uh, it uh, also means favor. So we see that the grace of God empowers us. It uh, makes us strong. Uh, the, the grace of God gives us favor as well. Uh, and it also empowers us. Okay, So we can draw strength from God's grace, even as uh, the, the enemy, even as the devil tries to deceive us and move us out from our position of uh, uh, grace to a position of works and uh, or, uh, to the position of guilt and condemnation. You know, uh, another area that the devil makes us feel, uh, moves us to an area uh, away from grace is uh, when he makes us feel inadequate. That means uh, we come to a point where we think that we cannot do it. Uh, you know, we are nobody, or we, are, uh, we don't have the skills, we don't have the talents, we don't have the creativity, uh, we don't uh, speak well enough, or we're not good enough. Uh, you know, so he moves us into that area of feeling inadequate. Yes, we all feel inadequate sometimes uh, when we are given a task where we feel it's too big, too great, we think that uh, we really cannot do it. But at those times, uh, you know, we don't give in to the feelings of inadequacy and not do anything about the task that God is assigning us or giving us or the opportunity that he is uh, uh, blessing us or the purpose he created us for. But at that times or at those times, we will rely on the grace of God. And we need to know at those times 
that the grace of God and would empower me, okay, or the grace of God will empower you, and you need to know that because of this grace, we can go forward, we can do what God has called us to do, focused us to do, or He's given us to uh, do. We can still work on it because His grace is freely available for us, and His grace will undergird us, undertake for all of our limitations, our weaknesses, our shortcomings. Uh, inadequacies uh, and we can stand firm in the grace of God. We don't have to shy away from all the challenges uh, or the greatness of the task, but we can still go ahead because we know that His grace will undertake for us. Okay. Uh, what the enemy does is, is makes us feel so inadequate that we shy away from the task uh, from the call and the assignment that God has for us. Uh, but, you know, um, the grace of God will undertake for us and take all our limitations, shortcomings, weaknesses, and uh, inadequacies. And we can go ahead uh, because we know that the grace of God is freely available for us and it has already been freely lavished on us. Okay. Uh, so we need to stand firm in the grace of God, just like Paul tells Timothy. Um, uh, you know, sometimes we think that in our own self, we will not be able to do it. Yes, uh, we feel inadequate at times, but the grace of God will enable us. Okay? So just like Paul tells Timothy, we can also be encouraged uh, this morning that uh, you know, we need to be strong in the grace that is in Christ uh, Jesus. Okay? Then, uh, any questions, any doubts? Is this whole concept of grace uh, uh, clear and why he's writing about this here? Yes? Yes, no? Okay. Okay, we'll move on to uh, verse 2. Okay, and the things that you have heard me among, heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, so now Paul is charging Timothy uh, to turn around and to pass on, you know, what he has been taught, the truths that he has been taught, what he has learned. To pass it on to the succeeding uh, generations. Okay, and this is something that all of us must do. You know, or, you know, the question asked is, you know, what are we doing with what God has put in our lives, or what are we doing with uh, what we have experienced about God, or what we have uh, heard from God, or the revelation, or the truths that we have received that we have. Learn from God. What are we doing about it? Or are we passing it on to others? Are we passing it on to someone else? Uh, well, it's very important uh, because that is what God has called us to do. You know, uh, all the experiences, the truths we have learned, the revelations, um, you know, everything that God has revealed to us uh, is something that we just don't keep it for ourselves, but it's something that we need to pass on to others okay so we'll stop here we'll come back and uh, you know move on to verses three and uh, the rest of the verses we'll take a break now and uh, we'll come back after the break okay